Well guys, things are about to get insane. Hey guys, camera for Arrow Season 4, Episode 19, Canary Cry, and I was really looking forward to this episode, but at the same time I really was dreading it because of the fact that it was going to be really sad. I knew this was going to be a really sad episode, probably one of the hardest episodes of Arrow to get through, and that's exactly what this was. But it also was, I think, a very well done episode. It was kind of like the episode where Sarah died and all the characters said to base, or when he, more like when Moira died. Like, less when Sarah died and more like when Moira died. If you remember when Moira died, what Oliver went through, I mean, it's very much like that, except we see more of the characters going through that same kind of situation, and I definitely did like seeing that, and in many ways, it really does, it, you know, Laurel's death, I think, really has paid off, and a lot of people have said, oh, it's unnecessary that Laurel died, but I really think we're starting to see that it really is paying off, I and mean, we need to get rid of a character, it adds some really good drama, it adds some really nice, um, I think, uh, I, I think it adds some really nice, um, darkness to the show. I mean, this was a fun season, but now it seems like it's gonna be the darkest season yet. I mean, I heard the finale is gonna be their darkest yet, but let's just get into this episode because there were some tough scenes this episode. It really was a hard-hitting episode to watch, but I really, all the better for it, really. Let's just get into the episode, though, because there really is a lot to talk about here. So we start off at a funeral where Oliver's invited to deliver the eulogy, but can't be there, and instead Laurel stands up to say a few words because we are actually in, um, May of 2013, which I thought was interesting that we saw. We're in May of 2013, and it's for Tommy. And I really love the way this was done because Oliver hasn't been as affected by a death and has had as big as a death since Tommy. Tommy was really the first big death of this entire show. It was the death that basically showed that the show wasn't playing around, that it was going to kill off characters. And Laurel delivers this really impromptu speech, complete with a veiled swipe at Oliver, while he watches from the sidelines. Basically, he just couldn't get himself to that funeral. It was too hard for him to do. She then says something to redeem as he walks away, and it's a really powerful scene. I mean, you really do see that Laurel gave him a lot of that strength. Laurel gave him a lot of courage. Even though he had Felicity, think of the relationship that Laurel and Oliver were starting to develop. I mean, even though, obviously, him and Felicity, you know, from after him and Felicity broke up, think of what they were starting to develop. Now that's kind of gone. A part of Oliver, you can tell, is missing, and in the present day, Lance walks through the various members of Team Arrow and stops into Laurel's room, and, uh, we literally go right from where we left off, where basically, you know, we see Lance, and it's a very hard scene to watch. He's, you know, she's still there on the bed. He cries, the doctor her hands off the Black Canary costume to Oliver. Lance can barely speak and staggers away from the room, and he just doesn't know what to do. He can't bring himself to think, my daughter's dead, my daughter's dead. I mean, obviously, he has Sarah back. He knows he has Sarah back. He's fine with that. But now he's lost Laurel, who he has done so much for. I mean, think of everything he's done. In these past two seasons, everything he's done has been for Laurel's safety. Why did he become, you know, why did he start working for Dark? Because that was for Laurel's safety, to ensure her safety. Uh, why has he even been a cop to ensure Laurel's safety? Why has he, you know, why do you have doubts about her being the Black Canary? To ensure Laurel's safety. I think he always knew something that this would happen, and that really was his one fear. But I think Lance wanted to keep that hope alive, and now that hope is kind of gone, and it's really sad to see, and I know a lot of people think that Lance is annoying, but I, you gotta admit, I mean, he really is a hell of an actor, I mean, he really acted the hell of that scene, and I think he really did a great job. So at the lair, Oliver and Diggle talk about the situation with his brother, and th really, the one that this seems to be hitting the most is Diggle, which is interesting, which makes sense because Diggle feels he's the direct cause of this, since he trusted Andy, and because that, he feels that that's what killed Laurel, and... Basically, he feels bad that if he had listened to Oliver instead, trusting his brother, Laurel would be alive now. But I like that Oliver's trying to tell him, look, it's not your fault. You had nothing to do with this. And in many ways, no, it's not really, you know, his fault. It's not his fault. You know, he didn't know that Andy wasn't to be trusted. This was his brother. He trusted him. You know, he made it seem like he could be trusted. And there's really nothing that Diggle can do about that except feel sorry. And... On News 52, we see Alex again this episode. He announces via press conference that 88 Laurel Lance has died and that her presumed killer, Dark, is still at large. And, uh... Basically, now everyone knows that Laurel's died and that Dark is the killer. And an arms deal is going on in a parking lot where a woman dressed like Black Canary uses her sonic scream to knock the men down. Now, why this is happening, we don't know, but she steals everything from an open car trunk and make off. And basically, is trying to make Black Canary look like a criminal. Trying to ruin Black Canary's name, trying to make her look like this corrupted figure, and... The thing is, I like this, but it very much was like what we had with Oliver last year with um, Ra's al Ghul. If you remember, Ra's al Ghul was trying to ruin Oliver's name. Kind of what's going on with Laurel. The difference is, nobody can really stop this from happening because Laurel can't directly say, oh, this isn't actually how the Black Canary is because Laurel's not there. So it makes it all the more tragic to see. And 
It really does show how lost they kind of are with Black Canary. I mean, Black Canary was such an integral part of the group that they kind of are lost without her, and I like seeing that, because at the lair, Felicity, Thea, and Diggle shrub to respond to Oliver's call for Team Arrow. Lance shows up soon after with a newspaper that indicates Black Canary was back in action last night, and he's kind of in denial. He's kind of thinking that maybe there's a chance that she's still out there, but Lance is desperate to believe Laurel's still alive, which the team tries to discourage, but they can't come up with a better idea, because obviously, Black Canary's out there, so... They're thinking that maybe she faked her death, or maybe there's something else going on, and I love that they don't actually know if Laurel's dead or not. It really creates this very interesting conflict here, and the fact that it's not just, um, you know, it's not just the fact that Lance is crazy, they don't actually think that Lance is, you know, necessarily crazy, they actually do think he has some logic there, because, you know, he, she could, he could have, you know, she could have faked her death, things like that, so... When they head to the morgue to check on Laurel, her body is still in the drawer. Taking the wind out of Lance's sails, he runs out, but Oliver stops to tell Laurel's doctor that he believes somebody stole the sonic device from her belongings, and, of course, we know that Laurel said something to Oliver before she died. We don't know what that was, and that's one of the things I was most looking forward to this episode, actually, was what Laurel said to Oliver before she died, and you can tell that Oliver is thinking that somebody took that sonic device, which we know that they did. We know that someone did take that, and the doctor says that there's a fairly regular patient who might be a good suspect, but she can't tell him when it is due to confidentiality rules, which is just, that's just how it is, and, you know, there are certain things, doctor-patient confirmation, that's something that, you know, um, that's something that you guys should probably know about, that when you have certain things like that, you can't really reveal, it's just something that you basically keep between you and your patient, and, in the flashbacks we see, and I like that the flashbacks were not, had nothing to do with Oliver, Tiana, and, uh, um, Whatever, I can't even think of his name right now, but you know what I'm talking about. Oliver, Tiana, and, uh, what, what the fuck's his name? I can't think of his name. The guy that starts with an R. I can't think of his name right now. Um, but... <laughs> I'm glad we didn't see that because, honestly, I haven't been focusing on it. I don't think they've been interesting. I think these were a lot better because it showed the weight that Tommy's death had on Oliver and the the lengths that Oliver went uh, for Tommy's death and basically what this did to Oliver. He hasn't been this, you know, in you know he hasn't been this hard hit by a death since Laurel. Tommy was a big part of Oliver as well. You know, he gave Oliver that strength and he was his best friend. He always stuck by him. Even though I didn't watch season one, I know a lot of people really did love Tommy and I remember people were freaking out when Tommy died, and Oliver then goes, basically in the flashback, Oliver goes to Oliver's apartment, Laurel goes to Oliver's apartment, talks to her about Tommy's funeral, Oliver tells her that he stayed up all night working on a eulogy, but couldn't get past the idea that he failed Tommy, that he really feels like he could have saved him and he completely failed, and she tells him that he can't blame himself for what happened to Tommy, and this is stuff, of course, that we didn't see, because if you guys remember, season one did end with Oliver basically hiding out back in the island, and Oliver says she would blame him too if she knew the truth, and it's a really powerful scene because you can really see how this affected Oliver and basically what he had to, you know, what how he feels about Tommy, and that you know he knows that Malcolm Merlin was the killer of Tommy. This is very much the situation with Damian Dark. Is that Damian Dark is the killer of Laurel? Malcolm Merlin is like that with Tommy, and that was kind of the moment where Oliver knew I can't trust Merlin, and that you know that was kind of when that started. But I really love the way that that was handled. I thought they did a very good job with relating that to what was going on. Here. Here. And, you know, this is when I love the flashbacks most, is when they connect to the current situation, that's when I love the flashbacks. So at the lawyer, Felicity is trying to track the new canary via facial recognition, but Diggle is distracted. He missed the Felicity that his brother was working with Dark and responsible for what happened, and he really is hell-bent on going after Dark, going after Andy, and basically getting vengeance on Laurel's death, which I love that Diggle feels it is his duty to do this. Obviously, it's not. You know, this is not at all something that Diggle should be doing. You know, it's not his fault. I know that he feels he should should be doing this, but you can tell what the weight this is having on him, and I don't think we've ever seen Diggle really react to a death like he has with Laurel, and it's not because Laurel died, it's because of the fact that he really feels that if he would have just not trusted Andy, all of this could have been prevented, which in many ways I do think, like I said, he definitely has some logic there, and I definitely do think that he's not wrong in saying that trusting Andy was a big factor into Laurel's death. I think I think if he had not trusted Andy the way he, that he did and gone against Oliver like that, I do think maybe this could have been prevented, but I don't really know. I think there's a, there's a possibility, but I don't really know what's going to happen, or I think that's going to be very interesting, and uh, I, I think this is a very interesting direction, um to put uh, Diggle in. I definitely did like seeing that. 
So Alex and Thea are on a date trying to distract Thea from everything that's going on. And I was surprised that Alex and Thea are still dating. I didn't know they were, but apparently they are. She asked him why he became a political operative. But before he can answer, the woman wearing Black Canary's costume and Sonic devices attack him. I do get why these two are together. They're trying to, like, move forward from Laurel's death. And basically they need each other and that kind of thing. So the woman wearing Black Canary's costume and Sonic device attacks him. She nearly kills him. I literally thought Alex was going to die there. I mean, I wouldn't really care because you guys know I haven't really cared about Alex's character. Um, the, the stops her then calls Oliver in, and when he goes to challenge her, she hits him repeatedly with the Sonic saying that he failed the city, and when he left, and that they, he left them to die at Reddington, she runs away, and, uh, that was crazy, we don't know who this is, but we know the Dark is probably responsible for this. So since Cisco had keyed the device to Laurel's voice, it shouldn't be working for this girl, but somehow it is working because it was magic, you know, was mastered for Laurel's voice. That's how Cisco made it. For whatever reason, this is working though. So Oliver says that Reddington was a plan, was a place where Hive was holding Team Arrow hostage during the Christmas party, and basically that's what's going on. So apparently this girl's parents died that night, and she blames Green Arrow for that, which is very interesting that we found this out. That basically this wasn't, this didn't have to do with Dark, which I did like seeing. I like this didn't have to do with Dark. This was simply Simply a girl whose parents died. Now she feels like Green Arrow wronged her. So, at his home, Lance is called in Nyssa in the hopes of using the Lazarus Pit because he feels that's what they can do. That they can use the Lazarus Pit to resurrect uh, Laurel. But I love what Nyssa said, that she destroyed the Lazarus Pit and he leaves. As we know, she destroyed it because she knows no good can come out of it. I mean, we know what Thea went through in the very beginning of the season. That she wasn't herself, she was acting erratic, she was acting more violent than usual, she couldn't control herself. Nyssa does not want that same thing for Laurel. We know what Sarah's had to go through, you know, she's had to find herself. You know, there's no good that can really come out of the Lazarus Pit. And that's why Nyssa had to destroy it. As we know, Nyssa has now taken over... Um, for her father, you know, now she is the new, um, Ra's al Ghul, and in doing that, basically, she is now, you know, trying to fix things, and a big part of fixing things is by destroying the Lazarus Pit, which I think was the right thing to do, because that's really what caused a lot of the problems this season, definitely, but, um, yeah, so Lazarus Pit's destroyed, there's no way they can resurrect Laurel, and I like that, I don't want them to resurrect Laurel, honestly, I've heard people say that, yeah, they should, I don't want them to, I want them to stick with this death, I think it's a very hard-hitting death, I think it's a very risky death, but it's also a very ballsy death, the fact they actually had the balls to kill off someone as big as Laurel, it takes a lot of guts to do that, I'm happy that Arrow did decide to stick in that direction, and not try to immediately resurrect her, there have been many shows that have done that, and I'm happy that they didn't do that here. So at Oliver's abandoned campaign headquarters, Felicity comes to find Oliver alone, being himself up over everything that's happened. He really feels this is his fault. And I like the way that Felicity and Oliver act in this episode. This wasn't Felicity yelling at Oliver. She's not mad at Oliver. In many ways, she's just trying to be a friend to him. Even though, um they're not together, they're still friends, and she's saying that she's blaming herself too, but Oliver tells us that really the reason he blames himself is that it gives him a reason for unreasonable situations, and that really is what's going on here, this is an unreasonable situation, he feels this is his fault, and Thea calls Felicity to save Lila, called looking for Diggle, but that he was supposed to be checking on her, and we get this incredible scene between Diggle and Oliver, and holy shit, David Ramsey just acted the hell out of this scene, I mean, he really was incredible here, this scene here, maybe one of my favorite Diggle scenes of all time, the way this was done. We see as Martin Diggle stops Ruve Adam's limo by shooting the drivers, pulls her out of the limo, and when she starts getting smart with him, he pistol whips her as he's about to, he's literally about to kill her, and Oliver arrives, knocks again out of his hands with an arrow, telling Diggle that he can't attack the mayor of the city no matter who she is, even though she is Dark's, you know, wife, she's still the mayor, and the, you know, the kind of, what could that, what that could do to him, he can't really afford the kind of weight that would have on him, and Diggle says that he has to find his brother, get him off the streets. Oliver tells him that Laurel would expect them to be better than this, and they can't just go around killing people. That's what Diggle wants to do. He wants to basically go on this killing spree and basically kill anyone that's associated with Andy. Um put a stop to it. They just can't really do that right now, though. They kind of got to be low-key about it, because knowing that they killed Laurel, and knowing what they can do, I mean, any of them could die. I mean, it's really shown that no one is safe, but also the fact that this is the mayor. This could get Diggle in jail. This could get Diggle, um, killed. I mean, there's so many things that could happen if Diggle kills the mayor. I mean, just think about it. Killing the mayor in general is a big consequence. There are a lot of consequences for that, and they're not usually good. He's gonna end up in court, and there's just a lot of things that could happen that they don't need to deal with right now, and and it's just going to make things worse. And I didn't th think this was coming across as Oliver being a pussy. I know a lot of people think that Oliver pussies out. I don't really think he did here. I think he had a logical reason for not killing Ruve. Why? Because she's the mayor. And killing the mayor just prevents more problems, which they're already dealing with problems. They don't need to be dealing with more problems. 
So, on TV, Adams blames Nero for killing Laurel, saying the Black Canary attacked her chief of staff, and that one of the vigilantes attacked her car last night. She has ordered the DA to issue arrest warrants for Team Arrow, starting with Black Canary, and again, they're basically trying to paint Black Canary as this corrupt figure, and... Oliver knows that a frightened teenage girl is now in the crosshairs and says they need to find the fake canary, Evelyn Sharp, before the police do, which is the teenage girl that is pretending to be Black Canary, basically. So I like that this was a girl that we hadn't met before. I think it just adds context to showing what Black Canary did for people. I mean, Team Arrow really does inspire many people, and I don't think we really touched upon that. The only show I've really seen that's done that is Supergirl. I mean, The Flash has kind of done that, but Arrow really has never done that, I think. Supergirl really has done that in the best way, but Arrow, I think, really did it very well here, really to show how much Team Arrow inspired people and what they've done and the hope that they have in that city and how when you lose one key figure like Black Canary, you can just lose all hope. I mean, they really, Team Arrow is kind of scrambling right now because they don't have Black Canary. Black Canary was one of the most important figures and they don't have her. So Nissa calls Oliver to talk about her fear that Lance is in pain but also denial, the fact that he doesn't want to believe that Laurel is dead, which I do understand because, you know, when Sarah died, she came back and when Thea died, she came back and Oliver tells Nissa that he's agonizing over not being able to help because he can't really do anything right now. He needs to focus on getting Evelyn Sharp, and then he can focus on that, but he can't really focus on helping Lance, and I feel like for a while, this season, Lance is going to be like this, and I think Oliver's eventually going to get him to come to his senses, but right now, um... Lance is in this in this state where he doesn't want to believe that his daughter's dead, which I can totally understand. I mean, we know, like I said, all the stuff he's had to do, I think Lance is not just feeling like, you know, oh, my daughter's dead, I don't know what to do myself anymore, but also the fact that I think he feels his life is pointless now, because what does he have to do now? I mean, he did all of this for Laurel, and he always had Laurel to stick by, and Laurel was always someone he could count on and talk to and give advice to and just be a genuine father figure to, and now that she's gone, I don't really think he knows what his purpose is anymore. I mean, yeah, he's been there for all Oliver, and he's been a very good ally to Oliver, even though there was at one time when he thought Oliver was corrupted, obviously, he was just doing his job, though, um, for the most part, he stayed a corrupt, he stayed a really nice, you know, ally to Oliver, and that seems like I think is going to be his job now, and I don't really know if he's ready to do that, which we'll get into. So in the flashbacks, Oliver and Laurel sit around looking at old pictures, talking about losing Tommy. She asks him about what Oliver had said earlier about wanting to make the city a better place, suggests they could do it together. The two kiss, says she's excited about the future, but Oliver is clearly upset, and it's a very, just really melancholy emotional scene mainly because of the fact and it's it's a bittersweet definitely mainly because of the fact that she thought that they could fix this up together and that they themselves could fix the city and of course we know the stuff that they did that they all really did this together but Oliver as we know did have doubts and Oliver did leave and it took them a while to actually assemble the entire team I believe you know till the end of season two that's really when they started assembling the team so at a former League of Assassins title, Oliver arrives to stop Lance, who is looking for League members who can help him bring her back, and Oliver tells Lance that if there was any way to bring her back, he would, but there isn't. And by the way, remember at this point, Oliver wasn't even known as a Green Arrow or the Arrow. He was simply just known as uh, the Hood, I believe, is what his name was, the Green Hood or something like that. So... At a former League of Assassins hideout, Oliver arrives to stop Lance, who's looking for League members who can help him bring her back, and, uh, you know, he really feels that the League of Assassins can help her, but Oliver tells Lance that if there is any way to bring her back, he would, but there just isn't, that Laurel's gone, and they really need to face that, but there is no way, there is no going back, you know, Laurel's gone, there's no getting her back, and Lance needs to understand that. So Lance tells him that Laurel was his rock, the one who helped him through losing Sarah, through his divorce, everything, he can't imagine functioning without her, and like I said, he really does feel like a part Part of him is just gone, and I know, yes, obviously, he, he spoke a lot of his emotion, but I thought it was a really great scene, a very telling scene, I mean, it made sense, obviously, he needs someone to talk to, the only person he can really talk to now is Oliver, because he really doesn't have Laurel anymore, he doesn't really know what his purpose is, and Paul Blackthorne, like I said, acted the hell out of this episode, he did an incredible job, every episode he's great, but definitely this episode, I mean, he really was fantastic. So at the lair, Felicity apologized to Diggle for not speaking up fast enough to help him out of his guilt. The two talk about encouraging one another that what happened wasn't their fault, and it's a really good scene because they each feel responsible. Like, Felicity, I think Felicity feels like she just got in the way of things because of the fact of the whole thing going on with her and Oliver. I feel like she thinks that they focused too much on that and not on what was going on with Laurel's situation, because remember, while Laurel was in that court case, Oliver and Felicity were trying to juggle their relationship and trying to fix things there, while Laurel was stuck in this court case all by herself 
herself, the only person that was on, that was really with her at the time was Lance. And now that Laurel's gone, I feel like Felicity feels like she's responsible for that. And Felicity and Laurel were starting to create that really great bond, and they were starting to bond really well. And of course, we know why Diggle feels bad as well. So I like that they each feel responsible. I definitely did like seeing that. Just then, they get a facial recognition hit. Evelyn is going to attack Ruve Adams at a gala, and... Basically, at the gala, Adams is glad handling the crowd as uh, Team Arrow is, is looking for Evelyn. She's caught by a security guard, but used the scream to disable him. She shoots a couple more guards on her way to the barn where she plans to attack Ruve, and Oliver stops her, telling her that, that while he knows she wants revenge, this isn't the way to get it. She says it's the only way why she, why she, way she has left, and uh, basically she feels this is what she needs to do. And in the ballroom at the last moment, Oliver managed to talk her down using the real Black Canary as an inspiration, and it's a really nice scene showing the way that Black Canary would, would not have done this, and when Rue sends a SWAT team after Oliver, he shoots a grappling hook arrow at the ceiling, gets away through a skylight, and it's a really powerful scene, the way that was done. I mean, you can just tell that he wants to stop this, and I love the way that was done. I thought that was awesome, and basically they did clean up Black Canary's act. So, back at the lair, he is upset that Evelyn has solely the Black Canary's legacy, and basically made her um, this way, but Oliver's sure that that's not going to happen, that they are going to show that she is this hero, and Basically, Lair of the Cemetery, we finally get the scene that we were all dreading, and that, of course, is the funeral scene. And this scene was just so hard to watch. So cathartic, but so hard to watch. So Lair of the Cemetery, Dino Lance is still in denial about Laurel's death, sure that she's going to come back to them like Sarah did. And, you know, just like just like uh, Lance is, she's also in denial. So Oliver stands near her casket to deliver a eulogy, and in the course of her eulogy with Evelyn looking on, Oliver does tell them that assembled that Laurel was killed, and I love that Oliver was present. That's the thing that adds so much to the episode. Seeing Tommy's death funeral and that Oliver wasn't there and that this one he did show up for, he could do it, he had to do it alone, he didn't have, he couldn't let anyone else do it for him him, he realized that he had to do this on his own, and that he needs to be the one to basically say that Black Canary is, you know, hey, Black Canary's a hero, you know, she's not, um, this corrupted figure. So Laura was killed in action with Black Canary, and that if Laura were here, he knows that she would expect them to live up to her example and save their city, and we find out that is what Laurel told Oliver to say before she died, was she basically said, I, I think she basically told Oliver, if I die, just reveal my identity to the world, I, I want people to know I'm Black Canary, because as we know, Laura was going to give up being the Black Canary, and, you know, basically the best way to do that would be for her to basically tell the world that she's a Black Canary, and I think she told Oliver that, look, if I get out of this, I'm going to tell people, but if I don't, I want you to do that, and I love that they revealed that. It just adds this really nice sense of relief and everyone knowing that Laurel's a Black Canary and knowing that she's not this corrupted figure. It just, you really care that. You really, it really adds this nice, this hope that you're hoping is gonna, something good's gonna happen. I don't think something good's gonna happen, because like I said, I think we're in for a really dark finale. Um... But I really love this scene. I think it just added a lot to it, and I definitely really did love that. So in a final flashback, Laurel's in her apartment when a note is passed under the door. It's from Oliver, who tells her that he has to go away. Maybe he'll come back eventually. He gives her the photo that kept him company on the island, and uh, basically he gave gives her this note, and that was the note that we saw before she died, which, yeah, I understand it's kind of on the nose, but I thought it was well done. I definitely did enjoy it, and uh, basically he gives her a photo to her that he kept him company on the island. He leaves to go on the island, which of course is where we started the beginning of season two, where I started the show, because as I told you guys, I never watched season one. I, I want to watch season one eventually, but I just haven't ever gotten the chance to. So Lair to Grave, we actually get to see those two scenes that we already saw. We see Oliver stands alone before a headstone when Barry arrives. Oliver tells Barry he's going to kill Dark and asks him to be left alone. Then, and basically, here's the thing that didn't work for me in this scene. Barry has his powers in this scene. Of course, as we know in The Flash, he doesn't have his powers right now. That's just the, it's a little nitpick here and there. It's not a huge deal because I don't know if Arrow is taking place at the same time as The Flash. I don't think it is. I think it's, I think The Flash taking place maybe a little bit before, but um, Arrow, you know, he has his powers, and The Flash, he doesn't. So it does give us that hope that he's going to get his powers back. It does kind of spoil that. But, hey, whatever. It doesn't really matter for the sh It doesn't really matter. So it, it really doesn't, honestly. We knew Barry was going to get his powers back because, like I said, the show's called The Flash. He has to get his powers back. So then he touches the face of Laurel's headstone and cries beneath her name and the dates of her birth and death is inscribed the Black Canary and it's just a really powerful scene. You really do see what this has done to Oliver but he's not completely hopeless. He does feel like there is something he can do here and he knows that he has to kill Dark and that it is his duty to do that. That even though he has said I'm not gonna kill, he needs to break that promise now. He needs to kill Dark because that is the only way to bring him to justice. I mean knowing what Dark did, you understand why Oliver had to kill Dark. Knowing that Oliver could just kill someone as powerful, you know, like Laurel 
Coral, who Oliver had such a huge, you know, bond with, and who just kept him grounded, and now she's gone. And here's the thing I love about Laurel and Felicity. Yes, Laurel and Oliver, yes, they're obviously, we're never gonna get back together. But the thing that Laurel can do that Felicity can is that Laurel was the one to keep Oliver grounded. While Felicity and Oliver just have really good chemistry, a lot of Oliver and Felicity is more of them planning weddings and just cute moments and that Oliver will do anything for Felicity while Laurel is the one that keeps Oliver grounded. Felicity is the one that makes Oliver do... Felicity is the one that holds Oliver back while Laurel, I think, is the one that kept him grounded. And Felicity now seems like she's going to be the one to encourage him. And we see a crying Felicity tells Oliver that they have to kill Dark. Of course, as we saw in the mid-season premiere, Oliver says he knows, but he doesn't know how. He says that he's seen the magic before, back on Lee and you, and it's more than just magic. I like that we got an extended version of the scene. He because now we actually know what's going on. Now we can actually see it. So he says he's seen the magic before back on Lee and Yu, and it's more than just magic. It's darkness. He's never been able to overcome the darkness. Felicity says she refused to believe that dark is unstoppable. She knows that there's a way to bring him justice, or Laurel will have died for nothing. And she really is hoping that they can't stop him. I mean, I think they both are hoping that they can stop him, but they don't know. Just because knowing that he can kill Laurel, he could kill them. And that really is that fear that they all have, and that's how the episode ends. And I love that it ends with them uncertain. They don't know if they're really going to be able to take down Dark. They're going to try as hard as they can. They're going to try to kill him. They're not They're not playing around. Like, they're not just going to battle him. They're going to kill him. Um, And that's the best thing to do. And that's where this episode ends. And really powerful stuff, guys, honestly. Like I said, there were some really hard scenes to watch, such as the funeral scene. Any of the flashback scenes, I honestly got a bit teary. I just knowing that Laurel was in those scenes and that we'll never see Laurel again and that dynamic is kind of gone is very sad to see. But as we know, we are going to go on Earth 2 in Legends of Tomorrow, in uh, Legends of Tomorrow, um, I believe that we're going to go on Earth 2, basically, and I think what's going to happen is that we are going to see Laurel there, so there is that. Uh, Sarah as well. I don't know if Sarah's going to find out. Sarah was not at the funeral, obviously because she's taking down Savage right now, but at some point she needs to find out that uh, Laurel died because obviously that's her sister. She cares about her. I don't really know what's going to happen. If she's going to find out how that's going to happen, we'll have to see what happens with that. But overall, guys, such a powerful episode. I can't wait to see what happens next week. Uh, we have four episodes left, and it looks brutal next week, guys, honestly. The promo was like Andy torturing Diggle. I mean, it looks really hard to watch next week, really. And it really seems like we're in for a very grim final four episodes, which I think for the season is going to work a lot better than it did last season, because last season, it was, just, it was constant darkness. There was no hope whatsoever. And this season, it's more uncertain. We're hoping things turn out well, but we don't really know, and... That's really what makes this season viral for me m elevates so much more than last season. Last season, there was no hope whatsoever. Oliver was corrupted. Oliver was gone. He wasn't the same Oliver that we knew. He gave himself to the league. Um, you know, everyone was losing Oliver. We had that ridiculous storyline. When here, we know that they're, they can possibly come back from this. We don't know if they're going to, but we have that hope that they are going to, and I definitely did like seeing that. Um... But what's going to happen with Dark? Are they going to be able to bring him to justice? We'll have to see. Ruve, it seems like it's not going to be easy to stop her. It seems like next week she's going to try to cause problems as well. This is definitely not the last we've seen of her. Uh, they're definitely going to try to cause problems. We'll have to see what happens with that. And then Diggle is going after Andy. We see that next week. He's going after Andy. Also, I'm hearing that this death is also going to bring Felicity and Oliver closer together. And the one thing that Felicity says is she always saw that Oliver always, you know, um, when he says something, he means it, and he always d uh, deals with things, and she needs him to handle this somehow, and I definitely did love seeing that. So, anyway, guys, I know you guys saw this episode. Really hard stuff to watch, like I said, at points, um, but really great episode overall. I really think this death has actually made the season stronger than it all already was. Like I said, for me, this is my favorite season of Arrow. I've loved everything about it. Well, not everything. There have been some episodes that have been better than others, but let me know you guys saw this episode. Love to hear your thoughts on it, and we'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for tonight's episode of The Americans, which I am so hype for, but again, kind of scared because I feel like we're headed for Martha's death, but I'll talk about that when we get to the review, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.